Thank you all for joining us on another episode talking about the commands of Christ. We've been working our way through the New Testament, pointing out different commands Jesus gave and giving application to them. So in this episode, we're actually going to be introducing a new command. Our command is found in Matthew chapter 22, starting in verse 19. And it says, Jesus says, Shew me the tribute money. And they brought unto him a penny. And he saith unto them, Who is this image and superscription? And they say unto him, Caesar's. Then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. The command that we are getting from this that we would like to talk about in this episode is the command render to Caesar. And it's interesting, there's there's kind of, the, this command is two-part in the sense that it's render to Caesar, but it's also render to God. So it says render the things, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, and then render to God the things that are God's. Now, obviously there's context um, with this whole command, Gabe, that we're going to get into. Why don't you go ahead and start us out with that? So as we look at the context here, one of the things I think is so is I'm excited about digging into this command, render unto Caesar, um, and then also render unto God the things that are God's, because I I feel like this is one, this is a command you don't necessarily hear talked about a lot. You know, some of the commands we've talked about, like let your light shine or follow me, we hear a lot mm-hmm. of teaching on, but this command maybe we don't hear as much on. And so it's been neat just digging into it and saying, yes. what does the scripture say about this? And what is um, Christ's heart um, mm-hmm. in, in, in in communicating these these powerful um, commands and truths? And so I, I'm i going to go ahead and I actually want to back up um, because we kind of picked up the story kind of right in the middle. And and I want to back up a little bit so that we can hear kind of what was going on kind of towards the beginning of that story. So I'm going to go back in Matthew 22 to verse 15. Um, and we're just going to kind of look at and, and dig into the, the context here. So it's interesting here because Jesus is giving this command to render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and unto God's that are things that are God's actually came in answer to a question being asked by the Pharisees. Um, and, and we're going to see this here. In verse 15, it says, Then went the Pharisees and took counsel how they might entangle him in his talk. So the Pharisees actually, their goal here in coming to Jesus, they actually were not going with the attitude of seeking truth. Their actually goal was to try to entangle him. Their goal was to try mm-hmm. to ensnare him in his words. Um, Luke's account really brings this out in Luke 20, verse 20. It says, um, speaking of the same event, it says, And they watched him and sent forth spies, which should feign themselves just men, that they might take hold of his words, and so they might deliver him unto the power and authority of the government. Mm-hmm. So that, I mean, these, they were coming with um, with very much a, a, a goal of, um, of, of trying to entangle Jesus in his words. Um, that was their goal, and they thought they could do it, but they were wrong. Because we're going to see as we go on here that Jesus, in his wisdom, answers them perfectly um, in a way that silences them, which is so powerful. But I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, so, so let's go on here to verse, um, the next verse here, verse 16. And they went out unto him, their disciples, with the Herodians, saying, Master, we know that thou art true, and teachest the way of God in truth. Neither carest thou for any man, for thou regardest not the person of men. Tell us, therefore, what thinkest thou? Is it lawful to give tribute unto Caesar or not? Now, Nate, I think there's a couple key components here that will help us understand the context. Um, And one is... You know, it says here they joined together with the Herodians. Maybe you can help us understand who the Herodians were, and also what is this tribute that they were bringing up and asking Jesus about paying this tax? Yes, that is helpful to understand, Gabe. So it's very interesting. This whole situation is, <laughs> when you start digging into it, um, it's just like it's mind-boggling, really, the hatred that the Pharisees had towards Jesus. So much so that they were willing to even bend their own standards, as we'll see here in a minute, in their own relationships with other peoples so that they could unify to bring Jesus down. And that's exactly what was happening here. So essentially, in just doing a little bit of research um, in the Blue Letter Bible, the definition they that's given for the Herodians, it's a Jewish political party loyal to Herod. The Pharisees who strongly opposed Herod and Roman rule and the Herodians who were strong allies of Herod and Rome set aside their political differences in order to conspire together against Jesus. So here's the crazy thing that blows my mind. Here you have two parties. You have the Pharisees 
<laughs> who were re religious leaders in Israel at this time. And you have the Herodians, who are also Jews, but they are strong supporters of Herod. And if we know anything about like the Pharisees, the Pharisees were, they didn't like the Roman government. They didn't like Herod. They didn't like the control of the Roman Empire. But then you have this Jewish group called the Herodians who did. And so, and here's the crazy thing, is that the Pharisees would have believed that this tax was not right. But then the Herodians would have believed that it was was right. And so the the trap essentially that they're putting Jesus is in is if Jesus says, yes, this tax is right, you should pay it. Then he would be siding with the Roman government. So the Pharisees and the religious Jewish leadership would have just that much more against Jesus. Or if he was to say, no, this is not right, you know, you shouldn't pay tax, then basically he would become an enemy to Rome. And so it was, they were, they specifically brought these two groups together to entrap Jesus and, and to trap Jesus. And so, but then another thing it's kind of a little helpful to understand is, is what, what is this tax? Mm -hmm. And so this tax that that's being um, called into question is a poll tax or is known as a censor tax. And it was imposed by the Roman government. So this was essentially kind of a reminder, a stinging reminder to the Jewish people that, hey, listen, you're owned by the Roman government. We're in control. You submit to us. And a reminder of that was, was in some ways the tax. Um, and the tax was worth one denarius, which if you know anything about a denarius, that's basically simply one day's worth of, of wage. And so um, an example of this would have been, this would have been the same tax that Joseph and Mary um, would have paid in Luke chapter two, or they, they were responding to a census and it was, this, it was for the purpose of this tax. Mm -hmm. So having these two things kind of in mind, kind of, unpackages the story a little bit more that's that's so helpful um and and as we go on i think that I, you i think you set the stage really well for then their question of verse 17 they said that this is the question that the the pharisees and the herodians had there it says tell us therefore what thinkest thou is it lawful to give tribute unto caesar or not and with the the um the background that you just gave i want us to feel the weight of this question it this was a a politically charged yes religiously charged <laughs> politically <laughs> religiously charged controversial question and i think we can't fully understand the 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 tension that was there mm -hmm. um but but maybe think of the most um politically charged topic of our day mm -hmm. and picture somebody coming up and just asking that question outright whatever it would be okay that's like what this was and another thing i'm thinking about with the context here too when i've thought over this passage is you have this tension here between the herodians who tended mm -hmm. to sides with herod and the roman government the jews that tended to side you know side with herod and the roman government would obviously be um, promoting the paying of this tax and you have the pharisees who had been more opposed to the roman government but then I want you to picture, even in Jesus' close circle, even amongst his disciples, there was probably some tension here. And, and here's mm -hmm. why I'm saying that. You have Peter, right, who was always kind of, you know, that just, you know, always kind of seeming to be um, fiery and pushing back against Rome, you know, would be kind of probably the attitude he would have, or at least it seems that way from when you study the Gospels. And some of the other disciples seem to have kind of this fiery, um, fight back, zealot type of attitude. So they probably were like, oh, just tell them, well, don't pay taxes, and we're going to, you know, let's go after it. And But then I want you to picture that you had Matthew the tax collector there too mm -hmm. and so here you've got matthew who's like okay we need to pay our taxes and move on <laughs> nothing to see here this is the right way to handle things so this was a charged question this was a tense tense moment mm -hmm. and so i want us to, to feel the weight of that and then i want us to marvel at the wisdom of jesus and the answer that he gives because here's what he says he says in verse 18 but Jesus perceived their wickedness, saw right he through saw it, right like he always it. do, yes. it cuts straight to their heart. But look at what it says. And said, why tempt 
ye me, ye hypocrites. And right away, he just calls them out for what they are, <laughs> right? A hypocrite being kind of somebody who looks like they're pretending to be one thing, but they're not, you know? Yes. And, and me, remember, we saw in the Luke and, account, that's yeah. those that feigned themselves That's to be right. just men. Yes. In other words, they were hypocrites, right? Mm -hmm. They were coming, acting like sincere seekers, but he called them out and said, no, you're not. But then, but I think because this was such a politically charged question, Jesus wanted to give an answer, not just for the Pharisees and the Herodians, but even maybe even for the disciples and the other people mm -hmm. that were around to hear his, his mind and his heart on it. Because then he says in verse 19, he says, I think this is so powerful. He says, show me the tribute money. And they brought him unto him a penny. Um, and he said unto them, whose is the image and the superscription? They said unto him, Caesar's. Then said he unto them, render therefore unto Caesar the things which are Caesar, and unto God the things that are God's. What a profound answer that actually answered both the Pharisees and the Herodians in such a way that they couldn't respond. Mm -hmm. Because he is both telling them that yes, they should render to Caesar, that yes, they should pay tax, to Caesar because he says there there's the, the coin and whose image is it made in of and I, and I think there's a principle he's giving here is that what something's made in the image of that's who it belongs that's to that's right that's and right. so he said because the coin is made in the image of Caesar render to Caesar the things that mm -hmm. are Caesar's but then he says render to God the things that are God's and one mm -hmm. of the profound things we're going to unpack here in later episodes is that we are actually made in the image of God so the command here to render to God the things that are God's is like a call over our life to absolute surrender and consecration to the Lord to render ourselves fully to him and I think that's a profound underlying reality and truth that we're going to see in this this is a foundational part in this story in the sequence of events because um, this particularly when Jesus is talking about whose image whose mm -hmm. superscription is on this because basically what we're dealing with Gabe is we're dealing with ownership mm -hmm. who owns this who is who has the authority over this and um, God works through authorities but he is the ultimate authority and I think as we go through these this episode and then three episodes after this Gabe we're gonna see both how God uses authorities and how we are to submit to authorities and kind of how what that looks like but then also that understanding first and foremost that God is our authority and that we submit to him and that his word goes above all other words and so but having this idea of like you know whose image is on it whose superscription it's almost like it's like kind of like the creator like if the creator's created something he has control and he has power over it right um and that's kind of the two pictures we're getting here man <laughs> is creating the image of god right um all of creation has been really created it's been created by god but then you have this this temporal thing called money that has an image on it and it's the image of man right it's 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 the image of caesar and it's this is something that's temporal it's something that's earthly and and another thing just real quickly before we move on gabe is is i think the reason why jesus's answer was so effective was he was calling their attention not just to the earthly but he was calling their mm -hmm. attention to a higher authority mm -hmm. than caesar mm -hmm. and i think that might have been part of what derailed mm -hmm. them because mm -hmm. maybe the herodians and the pharisees both recognized wait a minute there may be because they were both jews both mm -hmm. both um the the pharisees and the herodians were jewish people both would have recognized wait a minute there is a god mm -hmm. you know there is a higher power you know mm -hmm. than caesar and so it's almost cutting right to the chase and saying and, and Jesus is addressing something they would have both well understood and well agreed with. And I think it's so powerful because I think that Romans 12 and Romans 13 deal with both sides of this issue. Mm -hmm. Is that when we talk about render therefore unto um, Caesar, the things which are Caesar's, Romans 13 hits on that really well. Um, in, in, in Romans 13, um, starting in here in verse 1, it says, Let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God 
Whosoever therefore resisteth the power, resisteth the ordinance of God, and they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Wilt thou then not be afraid of the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have praise of the same. For he is the minister of God to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid, for he beareth not the sword in vain. For he is the minister of God, a revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So kind of we see here God's purpose in governing authorities that they would be ministers of good, that we would see them as ministers of God for good, authorities that he's raised up for his purpose. In verse 5 it says, Wherefore ye must needs be subject, not only for wrath, but also for conscience sake. And I really want to draw attention here to verse um, 6 through 8. Because it kind of touches right on this um, this rendering to Caesar, mm -hmm. just the things that are Caesar's. For this cause, pay ye tribute, right? Also, like there it is. Um, for they are God's ministers, attending continually upon this very thing. And then it's interesting because he uses almost the phrase here of rendering to Caesar. He says, render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor, owe no man anything, but to love one another for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. And it's amazing to think, because I, what I think is so profound here is even when he's talking about rendering into Caesar, he is bringing us back to the foundation of it is love. That we actually, even when we pay our taxes, we do it out of love. Love for mm -hmm. the God-ordained authority structure that he's mm -hmm. put in place. Um, a love for God and wanting that um, to, to, to honor him by honoring authority is so powerful. So Romans 13 is really clear about the need to render into Caesar the things that are Caesar's. And then I think Romans 12 actually hits on the other part of this, and that's rendering unto God the things that are God's. Um, and because Romans 12, 1 says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living that's sacrifice, right. holy and acceptable unto to God, God yes. which is your reasonable service. So there's that, what we are to render to mm -hmm. God is our very lives, as, as you so eloquently pointed out we are made in the image of god mm -hmm. and therefore we belong to him amen and so the reasonable service of this the, the the reasonable response to realizing all that god has done for us and all that he is to us in christ like that we would yield ourselves fully to mm -hmm. him um and that we would render unto him our very lives. So I think Romans 12, render unto God the things that are God's, our very lives given unto him. Romans 13, rendering unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's. You see both here, mm -hmm. and both I think have a profound application for our life. For our listeners, as we conclude this episode, really my encouragement and our challenge to you is to see this from God's point of view, to see taxes, to see government, to see really all of life from God's point of view. And I think the 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 most significant thing here, one of the most significant things to take away from this is not the first portion so much as in to render to Caesar, but it's to render to God. Because I think if we get our priorities, if we get our understanding of who God is, who we are to God, and what we owe to God, we'll be able to give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's. We'll be able to render to others the things that are due to them. So we hope that you join us. We're going to be unpacking this. There's a lot more in this. And so stick with us as we continue talking about this command. God bless you.